this just gets crazier and crazier. Yeah, it's all still here. It's one of the most epic abandoned places I've ever seen. Uh oh, there's a car right there. Oh crap. I really do gotta get out of here now. He had something in his hand too, that must have been a gun. And really, what do I do? Where do I even go? There may be like no escape, but I think we just have to go for it. It was going so good and it just all went wrong. Whoa, whoa. Right there. See people, I shoot at them. If they run, you shoot. How's it going guys? Man, am I pumped up for this right now. You know why? Because I'm back in Wichita, Kansas. Home of what I still to this day call my favorite abandoned place ever. I'm going back to the giant abandoned factory that I explored over a year ago. Now this place before it closed served as like a pet treat manufacturing plant. And if you've ever seen the first video, you'll know it's absolutely giant. I'll link the first video down below, but Man, you know it's a good one when I go back again. Very seldomly do I return to the same spots and even less often for a second video, so I'm hoping this goes well. I'm actually going to employ the same tactic that worked out for me last time. That's by following this creek around the fields that run around the place. I gotta tell you, this is already bringing back memories. I see this creek is still just as polluted as it was last time. Ah yes, there she is. That field's looking pretty wide open, so I'm still gonna hug the trees while I get closer. It's is still wide open a year later. Yeah, this is the one that had all the cars sitting outside of it. There's actually some new ones, or at least ones that have moved. Oh, that's amazing. It's legit crazy just being back here. I guess for the second time, we'll start in this building. I just went ahead and left my tripod outside because this building's a little smaller. Won't take me too long to look through. Wow, I don't even think I saw this part of this building last time. This is where all sorts of tools and parts would go. Well, it's an old filing cabinet full of files and stuff. Yeah, you know, in my first visit here, I never saw this back area. Crazy. Wow. This is insane. All right, that opens. That's fortunate. Look at this stuff here. Oh, the locker room. See, that's what I'm talking about. Every now and then there's just weird noises and bangs, but just like last time, it's a windy day, so. What is this? At first glance, it looks like a bathtub, but I'm sure it's probably not like a tub for people. It's probably some sort of industrial thing. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in here. I got no clue what it does. That almost looks like a giant sewing machine, doesn't it? I can't imagine that's what it is, though. Some of these not look like little fire hydrants. Some weird stuff here. Tell me, does this almost look like some giant like kitchen dishwasher? Just just because of this part. I know that's not what this is, but... And then over here it says two rings for service. But whatever it does, this giant contraption is the largest thing in here and the most complex looking. See, that's crazy. That entire section was somewhere I'd never been the first time I came here. Now, time to go to the places I would recognize. And I wanna go over here, cause I'm really curious. Cause back in this area is where all those engines and engine parts were. Very curious to see if they're still there. Whoa. I don't think this was caved in like that before. This, was, this happened within the year. 
this all used to be enclosed. Yeah, there's still some here. Over here is where there's just a ton. I could be wrong, maybe I'm remembering wrong, but um, I think someone in the comments on my first video here said that these were like transmission things. Yeah, and I remember the big Toledo scale. But yeah, I think now I'm gonna move on to the, to the rest of the factory. The larger five story part. I'm actually really scared of running into people here, no joke. That's where I saw a couple guys walk in the first video. Anyway, this over here, this big part, is where I'm headed next. We'll go see if the window I used to get in the first time is still open. There's also this building. I've been through here the first time. It's mostly just kind of old parts and stuff again. Oh, well, they barred that entrance off. This part of it just looks crazy. Because when you're standing dead center here, you're just kind of surrounded on all sides by giant factory parts. In spirit of how I did this last time, I'm gonna go right through that window again. Here we are. It looks just as cool as I remembered from here. Yeah, it's all still here. You got the forklift still there, the giant tanks, big boilers, furnaces, and whatever all this stuff is. You know, it's not just because it's one of the most epic abandoned places I've ever seen, but like, this place has legit sentimental value to me because this is the first Explore video I ever made for this channel. Now some of you may know the story, but like the first 15, 16-ish videos that are uploaded on this channel were just re-uploaded from my other one when I decided to branch off and make an Explore channel, so. By the time I'd done that, this is the first place I ever explored with this new channel already created. The roof over here is actually made of wood, which is not good, because like it's already started over there pretty soon. Someday it's all gonna completely come down. Look at this. We can go ahead and get an aerial view from up on one of these platforms. This scaffolding is pretty sketch. Oh, but man. Up here. Place looks even crazier. Alright, even though I could spend all afternoon just standing up here admiring this place, I should probably move on because there's still a lot to cover. Yeah, this room looks about the same also. Now, I'd say it's time to go into the creepy part, the part where it's all pitch black and burnt down. Oh yeah, here's the area with all the parts and pieces all on the shelves. Just mechanical parts to all sorts of crazy stuff that would have been in here. Like I made note of in the last video and definitely saw for myself this place has many years worth of history of burning down. And here you see the aftermath of all that. Still looks pretty cool with all the sun coming in through there. <laughs> nice chair. Man, that looks ominous over there, doesn't it? Another forklift. That's definitely been in the fire. No, is that a vending machine? Yeah, that sure is. I was in the fire too. Look at that. It's got unopened cans in there. Can you believe that? And another forklift. That really does go back really far. More cupboards full of old parts and tools. Yeah, I can say for sure I never came back into this corner my first visit here. Look at that thing. It looks like a giant oven almost. Got these compartments. Got all these dials. Oh, now I see. This whole thing is a conveyor belt. That's actually really cool. There's two of them. There's one right here. Another one over there. And both these things run on for like 50 feet. That's crazy. More giant equipment over here too. A 
That's like a whole giant mechanical engine there. I wonder what that powered. I need to find uh, that staircase. This is actually really scary in here. Here's an office. <laughs> this goes to show you how tough this place is. Despite the numerous times catching fire, the main structure of it is still this heavy duty concrete with all these pillars, so it's not really gonna cave in anytime soon. What the heck? These are all bones. Oh, there's more of them here. They're all over. Now I know this place made like pet treats and whatnot, so they could have been using these. But that seems crazy to me that they'd all be left over like that. Where are those stairs at? Oh, I found them. I found them. Yes. This is just a really creepy place. I really think it's just too charred and crumbling to really get a good look at. The crazy amount of bones are just freaky though. This is insane. I'm just kind of weaving in and out of charred rubble and old machinery. Third floor, some better sunlight, but still completely destroyed. Over here's the walkway. Yeah, this little walkway is actually a catwalk in between uh, the two main buildings. Yeah, I remember these rooms. You know, I don't think I ever went down this way my first time. So, let's see what's on the second floor of this building. It's a weightlifting set over there. Well, not a not a whole weightlifting set, but it's like a some sort of gym equipment. I wonder what the odds are. There used to be more. Like if this was an actual gym, what are these showers? Looks like it. Now this area. It's a whole picnic table in here with couches and chairs. What the heck were they doing in this factory? Maybe this whole building was just like a worker's lounge area. Wow. What is this area? No freaking way. That's a whole pickup truck down here. What did I just find? This just gets crazier and crazier. Yet another area I never saw on my first trip here. No kidding. It's a Ram 1500. Looks pretty stripped. No wonder I never saw this section. Really the... That sounded way too loud to just be wind. Anyway, I was trying to say the only reason I haven't found this area is because really, the only way to get to it is that secretive looking little stairway. nowhere to go from here, so I guess I'll go back up the stairs. Where'd I come from? Oh yeah, it was right here. If I remember right, most of these upper floors are pretty empty. So yeah, the level above this one should be the top, at least of this building. All right. What do y'all say we do a nice little uh, roof walk here? Great view up here. These are steep. So, I 
think that's pretty much it for this building. Now I just gotta go back across the catwalk into the other one. See those upstairs one more time and that'll be all she wrote. I don't want to jinx anything, but I'm uh, somewhat surprised, but also glad I never ran into any people yet. I need a staircase somewhere. Why was that holding those clothes? Another secret equipment room, but there's no stairs in here. Maybe I'm remembering this place completely wrong, but I cannot find a staircase anywhere. Oh wait, no, never mind. I'm stupid. Whoa. I actually don't remember this. What is this thing? There's like four of them. Four or five ran here. Isn't that the back to a cement mixer? I said, this place is crazy. It just surprises me everywhere I turn. Uh-oh. There's a car right there. I can't figure that should be too much of a problem for me though, because the way I'm gonna go out is completely circling around here like I did to get in, so. Oh, they're out of their car. Oh, they're coming in the gate. They're coming in the gate. On second thought, I might just want to wrap this up a little quicker here. I want to see where he goes though. Yeah, if I'm going to leave here, I'm going to need to know exactly where he's headed towards. Oh crap. He's really coming all the way in here. He's opening the second gate. Now I'm really concerned. He's gonna go around where I can't see him. Huh. I got I really do gotta get out of here now. I don't like that. I know what to do. I'll take the ramp. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, uh, that's crazy. You can't tell that, but like, this goes like straight down diagonally. All right, I may have to start being quiet though, because I don't know where that guy went, and I gotta sneak out of here. I can't quite get through there, and I don't know where he is. That's where I just came from, that looks so crazy. All right, gotta go back up. holding. Where do I even go? I told you, I jinxed it. too high up. I'm not on ground level yet. There may be like no escape. Because he went around right towards where I'll have to exit.
Oh my god. Was that a gunshot? I think it was. He had something in his hand too, it must have been a gun. This went really badly. It was going so good and it just all went wrong. I can't see him anywhere. I don't know where he is. I've got several different possible ways I could get out of here. But I don't know which side he's on, so I don't know which sides to avoid. like this. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Who else would you? Oh, it's just me. My, my, you scared me to death. Okay, get over there now. What? Sit down. Get in the handcuffs. Huh? Put them on. Got it? Okay. Either I put them on or you can put them on. Take your pick. I've never put on handcuffs before. You're put them, just put them on each side of you. How's that? Well, put them in front of you. That way you can carry them in front, okay? What's going to happen? What? What's going to happen is the police mm -hmm. is going to come and then you take your name and they'll get you for criminal trespassing. It's nothing these days. It's a lot better than me shooting you, isn't it? Was that what I heard? Yeah. What you shoot at? Shoot it. <laughs> See people, I shoot at them. There if they someone. run, you shoot. There you go. Okay. Is there someone else here? Yeah. Just yeah. be cool. Nothing will happen. Okay. All right. I shot one guy this way. The other one. Well, it's all right. I'm not gonna shoot you. <laughs> don't you? Don't you? Don't you see? Uh, see? Set, something says a uh, uh, use of deadly force. What do you think that is? I thought that was kids spray paint. No, that's me telling you I'll shoot you. So where are you from? Case, the KC area. What are you doing down here? I'm bowling in a tournament. Bowling tournament? Yeah. That's good. So, so what made you come here? Well, I've heard of it. It's really epic. You know, I got my camera. I like to take photos and stuff. Nobody else is with you, right? No, it's just me. Okay. I see somebody. I'm going to end up probably shooting them. Oh, no. If if okay. I were with someone and I know you shoot people, I would I would have gotten them. <laughs> okay, I just don't want you know they say wait they scare me I'll shoot in a heartbeat. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's just life. What we're gonna do is we'll throw your camera and your bag in the trunk, okay? Okay. And I'll put my gun in there too. All right. All right. We'll get in a little red car. Let's drive up here. Set everything out. Police will come. They'll ask you for your driver's license. I'll give you a little ticket. 
and that's where it cuts off. At the end there, you can kind of hear me do a little fake cough to muffle the sound that this camera makes when you start or stop a video, just so that the guy wouldn't have known that I was recording that whole exchange. We got into his car and drove around to the front of this giant factory to wait over at the front entrance for the cops to come, of course, and it took the cops at bare minimum an hour to an hour and a half just to show up, because obviously, you know, because obviously the cops have much more pressing and important matters to deal with than this phony, psycho John Rambo's overprotective nature of this abandoned factory. So the cops finally show up. It's a male and a female cop. Two of them came. So the female cop is talking to that psycho guy, and she's getting his side of the story. And the male cop is talking to me. Now, this guy couldn't have been more than a few years older than me. He was a really young guy, really polite. And he never said so, probably because it wouldn't really be professional in his situation. But I could just tell he knew there was no reason for me to be dealing with all this crazy stuff right now. But either way, sure enough, um, eventually um, they read me my rights and everything. I got into the cop car. But actually, before all that happened, while we were still out front talking, all four of us, we were seeing two silhouettes of a couple other kids headed towards that bridge to go down and under to get to the factory the same way I did. And this dude literally looks at both cops and tells them, if he sees anyone else in there tonight, he's just gonna shoot him. And obviously the cops said, please don't do that, but I, I couldn't believe he looked two police officers right in the eye and said he was just going to go shoot people. Either way, that's the last I really heard. They took me away. Off to the local county jail, and once we get there, the guy cop is asking me all the usual kind of cop questions and stuff. We're sitting in the parking lot, and this is about 15 minutes later. I hear a call come in over his radio, and that call is a shooting at the exact same location they had just taken me from because that psychopath literally went in there and shot at those two kids. Now, fortunately, much of what that crazy dude was saying and talking about was just kind of a big bluff. He didn't even have anything lethal in that gun. I think it was just like pellets and stuff. At least that's what the article that I read about this incident online was saying. So the two kids were treated at the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries, and the cops finally showed back up there and took that guy away. I think they got him on assault and battery. I'm not sure what became of him, but I have reason to believe he's just right back there doing the exact same thing again. Um, the, the articles are kind of vague about it. They don't really have any follow-ups. To this day, what just messes with me the most, the thing that just bugs me the most about this whole situation is how... I got taken away simply on the trespassing thing, but they just let the actual threat to the public stay behind, even after claiming he was gonna shoot people. And what did he do? He shot people. I'm not sure legally what else could have been done there, but that is what messes with me the most. You can argue all you want about how what I was doing was technically wrong, but Let's be real, that guy owns a huge abandoned factory that people obviously go to all the time and he just camps out waiting to shoot at people. That's just not okay to me at all. Finally, they take me into the county jail. Um, you know, I got the whole shebang, you know, the mug shot, you know, the removing of my shoes and all that. They put me in a couple different holding cells while they figured out paperwork and stuff. And after about an hour of waiting in these couple cells and then them bringing me out, giving me the paperwork, you know, stuff about the future court date, fines and all that, they finally dumped me back out onto the street. Now, my memory is kind of hazy about the timing of the whole thing, but between when the guy caught me and when they dumped me back out onto the street in front of the police station, it was 1 a.m. by then, and my phone was on 2%, and I used what little battery I had left to pull up Google Maps just so I could find my way back to that factory across the street where I'd parked. So I walked, it was probably about a mile and a half, maybe two miles. It took me a little while to get there, but I finally made it back to my car. 
and drove across town, somehow found a hotel that still had some rooms left, and by about 2.30 in the morning, I was in bed, going to sleep, and I got about five hours, and, and I had to wake up and bowl that tournament that I was talking about, that I'd come all that way to bowl. And for the rest of the weekend, I tried to play it off as though nothing had happened. <laughs>